we're not making a, a historical documentary. You know, the, the heart of the story is, yes, it's Catherine the Great, but what Tony's so brilliant at doing, which he's certainly done in season two now that he's established the show, is just introducing so many different themes, ideas and characters, as we just mentioned now with Gillian Anderson. I really enjoyed your characters' performances in, uh, in season two. And, um, you know, a big part of this, this new season was this really big dynamic shift in power between Catherine and uh, Peter. So was it surprising to you at all that Elle Fanning and were, were she was, you know, really game for that? The, you know, what was it like to, to be around her when, and, and you know, you're char- seeing the characters change in, uh, you know, in, in the different the, the way the story changed for season two. All of those of us who were on basically the winning <laughs> side, although, you know, I start off the season actually in Peter's quarters, but I'm one of Catherine's gang fundamentally. So I'm, I'm on the winning side. Those of us who are like, we just spend most of season two or at least the beginning of it, just reveling in it. You know, that shift of power, like we've all been sort of desperately scrapping away, trying to get status. And then and then we get it. And it's, um, you know, we get to enjoy what we've sown um, and then realize all the the stuff that comes with it. And that power is, um, you know, it's not all maybe it's cracked up to be. It's not as easy as they think it's going to be. And um yeah, and th- things are tenuous. It's hard to hold on to power. Especially for Sasha's character towards halfway in the season, you're, um, you know, you're learning that there's some things about Catherine that, that you know, you, you can't really bank on, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of one of the characters you'd least expect that to happen because he is, he's so loyal to Russia he loves Catherine and he's incredibly loyal to her. But at the same time, this life changing moment is ma- it's great in one sense, um, but it's also extremely challenging and, and has, has brought up things that even Orlo didn't expect to happen. And therefore, in this season, his loyalty is is extremely tested. We see members of his family appear, you know, they want a piece of the pie because Orlo's now got even more power, he's got access to funds. So he starts making decisions that really he shouldn't be making and going behind Catherine's back. Which, like I said, I really didn't think that would happen, but it's really interesting. It just goes to show you you never know what's quite around the corner. There's just so many unexpected surprises, but at the same time, it feels utterly truthful in this world as well. And Julian Anderson comes in this season. Uh, What was it like having her you know, sort of just change the way things come together and like halfway through the season, it just sort of just changes everything. Yeah, it's always great to have the energy of a new actor on set because yeah. it's, you know, we're all so used to each other. And although that's lovely, that familiarity, you know, um, I guess we kind of, um, we know all the bells and whistles. We know all the tricks that the actors have and, um, and Gillian, yeah, she was just sort of this unknown entity. And what I love is that she's basically my height, um, which is great because everyone else in the show is massive. I mean, like, <laughs> everyone like, seems to be over six foot, like even the women, it's crazy. And um, she's also this little sort of pocket rocket. And um, it was great because Mariel's so kind of, on one hand she's really kind of carefree and joyous in season two and I kind of miss that antagonistic kind of um you know a bit violent Mariel and um I got to that all came back up with um Gillian's character because they really don't like each other (laughs) uh one more question uh you know the show really sort of brings a lot of humanity to to these characters that you know we were only familiar with through paintings uh, do you think that that helps the audience connect to these people that you know lived hundreds of years ago? But you know, the show sort of shows that they kind of go through some of the same things we do today. Yeah, this this show for me isn't. Um, we're not making a, a historical documentary. You know, the, the heart of the story is yes, it's Catherine the Great, but what Tony's so 
brilliant at doing, which he's certainly done in season two now that he's established the show, is just introducing so many different themes, ideas, and characters, as we just mentioned now with Gillian Anderson. Uh, and so, yeah, it ha- it, the story happens to be set in Russia, but it feels so contemporary, uh, universal and relatable. I think that's why people people love watching it. You know, it's, it, like I said, it's about Catherine the Great, but it's also about these these wonderful characters that exist in this court and the characters that come in and out of it as well. Uh, thanks for talking with me today. Uh, good luck on the re- uh, future of the show. So in season two, your characters are kind of fighting for relevance now that Peter's, you know, got under house arrest. Mm-hmm. Uh, so how did you prepare for your characters going from really arrogant people in season one to being totally desperate in season two? Yeah, it's definitely a new di- new dynamic. New dynamic for sure. and it's, um, I think the first time we realized it, do you remember at the coronation? Yeah. We're like, everyone's got front row seats and yeah. we're like right at the back yeah. in a separate room, like, you know, not part of the action. And it's like quite striking in that moment. I think like, you know, as I said, I think Griggle says it in the scene, it's like, I'm, we're just happy to be alive, right? Mm. And we're happy to still be able to drink and party and have fun with Peter. But funnily, it's Georgina that finds it more uncomfortable. Yeah. Not having that influence that we've previously had. Um, yeah, but that, that that's why the main focus of the season is to get Peter back into power. Yeah. You know. Well, although most of the show is is pretty fictional, uh, was there any part of Tony McNamara's scripts that have you guys going... I can't believe we're actually going to do this while we're wearing period costumes. All of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's constantly surprising and shocking you. And, and I think that's what's just so great about it. That you can, we can never, cause we all, cause we don't get the uh, episodes as, from the start of the show, we get them as we go along and we're always constantly trying to predict, you know, what, what do you reckon is going to happen? Where do you think it's going? And you know, we never, we never get it, you know, right. He's constantly shocking and surprising and just brilliantly weaving this show together. And um, so, yeah, all of it's shocking, but also really exciting, you know, because yeah. you find stuff out, find stuff out about your character and other characters that you just had no clue. And it's, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's lots of fun. There's the, in one of the episodes, there's a, I remember reading the script for the first time and it says like Peter's locked into his room. Um, and uh, he's quite traumatized by the fact. And um, so to kind of like, you know, keep him happy and distract him, uh, <laughs> Grigor dances in the, in the courtyard beneath yeah. his window so that you can see him. And it's just written, you know, Grigor dances. I'm like, okay, interesting. Grigor uh, pretends to be an elephant. I'm like, oh, okay, that's <laughs> strange. And then Grigor pretends to be an elephant sucking his own dick. <laughs> what? Well, how, you, how, you like, what, why is, how has Tony's imagination got me doing this <laughs> on screen in front of an audience? It's yeah. just, uh, yeah, madness. Yeah. And but that's what I love. I mean, his imagination is like limitless and mm-hmm. so surreal. And it is like, it's, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is there anything that you think today's viewers can really get from, you know, this, this modern take on things that have happened, you know, two, 300 years ago? that we can, you know, come, come away with today. It's kind of like, you know, she, the, Catherine's this, inc- she's an incredible character in history. She came as an outsider into a country that was really stuck in its ways. And uh, she tries to reimagine what society is. And mm. so in, so in so doing, you kind of like, you ask yourself as an audience, what is, what is it that defines like uh, greatness or a great leader or like the great qualities of a, of a society. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it, I think that's, should hopefully resonate with an audience and get them to ask those questions themselves. I suppose. Yeah. And this season also has interesting pairs like Grigor is spends a lot of time with Mariel, which is kind of a different pairing, mm-hmm. you know, from season, season one. So what's it like to, to, you know, act with people who you, you are in the show, but you don't, you haven't really, you know, been with them before. So it kind of, you know, has a little new, new, new vibe to it. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's great. It's, I mean, um, Tony said, I think he said it at the end of season one, that that was his intention was to just like put people together that you least expected and just see where that goes, where that takes us. And, uh, you know, th- there's so much more scope for that um, mm. because there's still characters that we haven't interacted with a huge yeah. amount. So it'd be interesting to see, you know, if we go into, if we do a season three, the where that goes, basically. Thank you so much for the time to talk with us and good luck on the future of the show. 
Thanks Thank very much. So much. Cheers. Take care.